and welcome to Writing 101, episode 11. When can I start publishing? I wanna start this out by saying that this is an incredibly personal question. Each person is going to have different feelings on publishing and what they're going to do. These are recommendations. Obviously, I can't control when or where or how you publish, but these are just some ideas that I'd like you to take into consideration before you go and publish. The first thing you should take into consideration is what kind of publishing are you interested in? There is traditional and self-publishing, and then there's also vanity publishing, which is largely um, seen as a scam. And so keep in mind that those are your options. Um, I'm sure there are hybrid options and there are other options, but those are your basic options. So um, first of all, figuring out roughly where you fall is really useful. If you're interested in hybrid options, that's something that you would really have to look up yourself. I'm not terribly familiar, um, but you should also look up all of these things yourself because I'm not going to be teaching you everything there is to learn about them. The next thing you need to figure out is where you will publish. And this is kind of true of traditional and self-publishing, but in a different way. Um, if you're self-publishing, you're gonna need to figure out what websites you're gonna publish on. Are you going to go wide? Are you going to um, do a limited release? Are you going to do it on a strange website that works with your particular genre? Are you going to do it on Amazon? Are you going to do it um, on a drive through fiction? Like where are you going to release your stuff? And that's really important that you figure that out because once you get locked into something, it is a little more difficult to pull it out of those places only because it takes a lot of work. So just keep that in mind when you're making your choice, maybe looking into that more in depth before you start sending things into places and start publishing would be really useful. The next question is, what are you gonna charge? Do you wanna sit down and figure out your hours on the project and figure out how much you'd like to make an hour, how many books you'd like to sell, and then break it down and figure out that your books are gonna be $75 a piece? Um, you might wanna reconsider that. Uh, there are other ways to figure out how much to charge for your books. You can compare to other people. You can compare to what your release cost is. You can decide to release them basically at cost. You can re decide to release them at a large markup. You can decide to only sell them yourself. You can decide to do almost anything you can conceive of. Someone is able to make it work for you. So think about what you really want to do, where you want to publish, how you want to publish, because those are really important things to figure out before you actually start publishing. The next question is incredibly complicated and I'm not even going to pretend to uh, understand it. Um, and that is, how are you going to advertise? If you plan on writing full time, if you plan on um, being an author as a career, advertising is going to be a necessity. This is totally useless if someone is not planning on like selling their books. Um, but if you're going to publish in any way, you need to really consider advertising. A lot of people will tell you that if you're traditionally published, you don't have to do any advertising yourself. And while that could be true, a lot of times they do expect you to do a lot of networking and have a social media presence and those kinds of things, uh, which you do have to keep up yourself. The next question is, are you going to buy stock of your own book? If so, how much? Um, I usually have somewhere under 10 copies of each of my books on hand, only so that way if somebody says, oh, you have books, can I buy one? I can, um, but I can't afford to have 100 copies of my book on hand, especially not because I'm not doing anything where I sell them right now. If I was going to conventions, if I was um, going to book signings more frequently, those kinds of things, then I absolutely would have more stock. But you need to figure out what your needs are and what your wants are and whether or not you're going to buy stock and if so, how much and how are you going to move it. Um, that's a lot to consider. So please look into every avenue possible. Look into all of the information you possibly can get because you can get stuck with a whole lot of books that you're not going to read because they're your book. And why would you read a new copy of your book over and over and over again? Um, but you also don't want to do something that's going to make it more difficult. For instance, if you have elderly family, they might not be comfortable going on the internet and buying things or downloading uh, things on an e-reader, things like that. You might buy 10 copies to sell to elderly family. Um, but just try to make sure that you're not keeping a massive stock if you don't need it because that really is just detrimental to you. The next thing you need to consider is what is your overall goal? Your overall goal is really important before you publish because you need to be able to answer questions regarding 
what you want to do with that book once it's published. You can do a number of things. You can do nothing with it. You can let it sit there. You can work on advertising. You can do massive overhauls um, to change the book up when you want to. You can do all kinds of things, but you need to decide what you want from your book sales, what you want from publishing and all those things before you can make any of these decisions. So the next question is to ask yourself, how is the best way to reach this goal? Your best bet is to go research your face off. You're going to find 500 answers to the question, how do I reach X goal? What you need to do is go and read several of those and figure out what the median response is, um, which response seemed to work for the most people, which response works with my process, which response works um, with my lifestyle, those kinds of things. And then as soon as you have all that figured out, you can kind of figure out how the best way is to reach the goal that you are re trying to reach. So I guess that does it for today. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Don't forget that this series runs every other week. We do have one more episode of this series scheduled. If you have any ideas for additional episodes, please leave them down below. I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna do after this um, chunk of them is done. So if you have an idea for another series you'd like to see, or if you have more ideas for this series, uh, just let me know and we will definitely do some more um, videos. So don't forget that every other week, the opposite week of this series, I do have the AuthorTube NewTubers videos. Those videos are uh, lists of the new AuthorTubers that I was able to find so that you can go and subscribe to them and meet new writers. My Wednesday night videos typically post about 6.15 p.m. Central Time, and at 8 p.m. Central Time on the NewTubers Week, I am also over on twitch.tv slash plasticageplays, where I play a drow in a Dungeons & Dragons game that consists entirely of drow. So if you want to go check that out, please go over there and check that out. Down below I have a Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, Snapchat, and Patreon, so if you're interested in any of those, please go check those out down below. I will see you guys all later. Have a wonderful week and good writing. Bye!